Hey y'all, welcome back to Roots and Refuge. I have a really great vlog for you today. I just finished editing it and realized that I failed to make an announcement that I needed to make. So here's a little PSA on the front end. We've recently made a really big change. Over the years of having media, we've offered merch in pre-orders, always using a third party business to print our merch. This is something that's been somewhat limiting in what we are able to offer and we are now shifting and we are bringing our merch sales and shipping and fulfillment in house. Our hope is that this is going to give us a lot more control over making sure we're able to provide excellent customer service as well as being able to provide a wider variety of products all shipping from the same place. So to celebrate this we currently have t-shirts, some sweatshirts. Uh, we are going to expand the options here. We'd love your feedback on what you'd like to see. They are being sold currently as pre-orders. We hope to change that so we can always have stock available. That's something that we're working on the logistics. But as of right now, we have some pre-orders open for multiple options on our website, rootsandrefuge.com under the shop tab. I'll put a link to it. And we are currently running a special to celebrate bringing this in House that every shirt purchase is going to come with a free sticker pack of three random stickers so it'll be like a little mystery bag so that means if you buy two shirts you get two free sticker packs it's one per item that you purchase and we would really really love your feedback here as we expand into this new venture in hopes of being able to provide you guys with better options I got a message just a couple of days ago of somebody talking about there were waiting tables and one of the people came in wearing a Roots and Refuge shirt, struck up a conversation. I've heard so many wonderful stories of people connecting with other gardeners and food growers and homesteaders and dreaming homesteaders um, through recognizing our merch and those stories warm my heart so much because not only is this an incredible blessing to us, it really helps us do what we do when you guys support us in this way. I love the fact that it is actually in turn also helping people connect with other gardeners. So thank you so much. Links down below. Check it out. Please give us feedback. Now let's watch the vlog. Hey guys, what's up? Good morning. Welcome back to Re Roots and Refuge. Almost said the farmer's table because I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> the number of times. It's really more the farmer's table videos. I have two YouTube channels if you missed that. Um, I started a new one that it covers cooking. It's been like four months ago now and it's going very well. I'm really enjoying it. I haven't posted a lot on there in the last week because I haven't felt great and so I haven't been cooking a whole lot. We've been kind of flying by the seat of our pants on that. But <laughs> the number of times I have started farmer's table videos with welcome to Roots and Refuge and then I have to restart it. I could probably, eventually I'll get the hang of it, but it would be hilarious. I think at this point I could probably compile like a, a nice long little uh, clip of me going, welcome to Roots and nope. <laughs> welcome to Roots and Refuge, nope. <laughs> over again. So I am having my morning coffee and getting ready to go out to the greenhouse. I thought I would turn the camera on, say hi to you guys, hang out with you for a little bit. Um, you know, I like to share with y'all what I am currently reading. I, I'm an avid reader. A million years ago when I actually had more spare time, I was actually part of like a local book club. It's something I really loved. I have looked and found a couple of local book clubs around here, but I've not yet been able to really work it into my schedule. So I just share with you guys. I don't know if I've gone into depth before. I've mentioned that I was very close to my grandmother. Her name was Johnette and she was, so theatrical and spicy and fun and she was a very very gifted writer uh, she wrote for the local newspaper for many years and was involved in theater and in drama she was a pianist and interestingly had five sons and one daughter and oftentimes in my adult life she passed away when i was 23 um I think about her and I think like it's so funny how I was so close to her growing up and my adult life after she's no longer here on the earth has like so formed into being having a lot of parallels and a lot of similarities. I was her oldest, I was her oldest grandchild and after she had had five sons and one daughter, me being a girl, I mean obviously like she just doted on me. We were, we were just really, really close. Anyway, when I was about I don't know, 10, 11, like I, I was a child, maybe younger than that. I went to my grandmother once and I said, grandmother, I want to be a writer when I grow up. I want to write books. 
and she said well Jesse you better start reading now and I just took that so to heart because here was this woman who had, who had been writing for years. She never wrote any books or anything like that, but she had this room in her house that had floor to ceiling bookshelves like all the way around it. She just, she collected books and when she passed away, I ended up getting a lot of her books. And I think that, you know, you see all over my house. I have another shelf in my bedroom, but I've got, you know, bookshelves. I, I love to collect books. I buy a lot of used books when I go in thrift stores. I always have to go look at the books. And it's just something that I very highly value. To the point of like probably excess, because obviously like you can get books from libraries. If buying books is not your thing, that's completely okay. But it is totally one of my things. So uh, I like to share what I'm reading with you guys and you all have given me some incredible book recommendations and sent me some amazing books that I didn't even know about. So here's what I'm currently reading. Usually I have several books going at once and audiobooks on top of it. We're currently planning our house and I have a lifelong fascination with Julia Child. I have been just enamored of, with Julia Child since I was very young. I remember seeing episodes of her cooking show when I was really young and just thinking she was so funny and and inspiring. And then there was a movie that came out, Julie and Julia. I mean, I don't know how long ago it was that that came out. When I was really first like learning to cook from scratch and that movie really inspired me which sent me like into the deep end of like reading all about Julia Child and learning all about her life. She's a fascinating woman. As we are preparing to make my dream kitchen, um, I, I saw this book and I ended up purchasing it. It's called In Julia's Kitchen. Now, this is probably one that people could get from the library and get a lot out of it. I don't know that it's something that I'll necessarily read again and again, but it's all about like different things about her kitchen design and kind of breaking down like TV kitchens and philosophies in kitchen design. It's a pretty cool book. I'm, I'm liking it. Um, definitely some food for thought. The next book that I recently got that I've just been opening up, this was sent to me by a viewer, Miss Nina. Thank you so much. Um, it's to the Tucci cookbook. So this is a Stanley Tucci cookbook. This had really great reviews as far as being, you know, like a real food cookbook, a lot of kind of seasonal eating. It had definitely has a lot of Italian heritage cooking in it. Um, but so far, just looking through here, I was like, okay, this is going to be really awesome, I think, for the summer garden. And of course, Italian cooking often does use a lot of fresh stuff like that, lots of herbs and stuff like that. And so I'm really excited to cook some things out of this this year. And then last, I actually had this one on pre-order and I'm like holding off. I haven't gotten into it yet because when I read Kristen and Hannah's books, these like just completely in engage me and I get so sucked in and have a really hard time like doing my responsibilities. And right now, this particular week is a very busy week. I do not have time to get sucked into a book. Um, if you have not read any Kristen and Hannah's book, she is probably one of my favorite authors ever, but definitely one of my favorite contemporary authors. It's like alive right now and actively still writing books. And this is her brand new one. She has two books that stand out to me. I've, I think I've read like eight or nine of her books. I've read a lot of them and they're all good, but she wrote one called The Nightingale and I've mentioned it before. Several of you have read it on my recommendation and loved it. Um, it's set in World War II and in, in Nazi occupied France and it's about two sisters I mean it will break your heart like you if you are if you don't like a heavy book and you don't like to cry on the pages of a novel it's not for you but if you like that like it's a it's a great book and then she has another one called the great alone very heavy it is a very very heavy book but it is so good so yeah if you like feel good not intense and stuff like that she's probably not the author for you but if you like books where a person just really really immerses you into a different time and into a conflict and a story and really allows you to kind of see the human psychology in those situations she deals a lot with like ptsd and a lot with like wartime topics and stuff like that she's an incredible writer and this is her new one it's about the 
Vietnam era. Oh, another one of her books that is also extremely good. I would say it actually ranks up there with the other two I mentioned is The Four Winds. And it's about the Dust Bowl and kind of what that was like. And man, I, I learn a lot. Like I love a book where it kind of introduces a historical topic to me that I can then go research it more and really learn a lot. And then I love a book that makes me think like, what would I do if I were in that situation? So she definitely has like a little bit of like a homesteading and gardening theme in a lot of her books. So like the Nightingale, one of the sisters is a gardener and of course it's dealing with the, the rationing and trying to feed your family during wartime. And then the Great Alone, they're going to homestead in Alaska. And then the Dust Bowl, of course, they're farming and, you know, the Depression era and then migrant labor, you know, and it's dealing a lot with life on a farm. And so, I don't know, it's very cool. I haven't read this one yet, obviously I just got it, but I'm sure it's gonna be awesome. And if you like books like that, I definitely recommend her. So, I just thought I would share that with you guys. I have this little stack of books here that I just recently got and was like, I wanna tell my friends about these. Last night, um, at like 6.30, we're in here making dinner. Um, I, made, I made salmon chowder with canned salmon I probably won't make it again. The taste was good. I, I only tasted it. It had a lot of dairy and I couldn't really eat it. Um, everybody really liked the taste. The texture was a little weird because canned salmon has bones in it. I think that if I make that again, it needs to be with salmon fillets. I've made clam chowder that way and it was more or less that. I just thought I had clams and I didn't. So I tried to improvise and it was okay. Everybody ate it, but we we all mutually decided we wouldn't do that again. But at like 6.30, Jeremiah's like, do you have bread for school lunches tomorrow? And I was like, no. So I started the bread. I fell asleep when it was in the oven. Thankfully, Jeremiah is a night owl. And so I woke up at like two in the morning and flew out of bed thinking my bread was still in the oven. It was out, he handled it. All right, let's go outside. I wanna go out to the greenhouse and say good morning to the farm. What a beautiful morning. The birds are singing, the cows are mooing, the sun is shining. So the sun rises over the trees here where you can see. It's uh, mid-morning now, it's about 8.45. And I love the way that this field looks. The camera can't quite capture it. But right when the sun comes up, it's just everything is kissed by that beautiful golden glow. We, our house is gonna go right here in this field. And on that side of the house, we're doing like a little sun porch. It's not real big, but it's enough space to, you know, like bring, um, bring some plants in, keep some house plants. And then also I'll probably use that some for like early seed starting because I, my greenhouse is kind of big and I have a hard time keeping it warm enough during this, like, it's just a few week period here in February that we really have to work towards that. But um, with the sun porch, I'm so excited. It's right there where the sun comes up and it's just gonna be so nice to be able to sit in there in the morning, have coffee, be kissed by the sunshine. Hey there, nosies. Good morning. Good morning. We actually brought these kerosene heaters in that we have and like typically these are kind of things we would use like in the barn whenever we were like working on something or we would heat these up like if we were butchering and we were going to be outside where it was cold kind of having a little heater. This is not a sustainable way to heat this greenhouse. It is not going to be something that we're actively doing. For the most part on a sunny day we don't need anything. We need the fans. So on a sunny day even if it's cold outside it'll be so hot in here. But with starting frost tender things, tomatoes and all the stuff that I'm now actively starting, I have to keep the greenhouse above freezing with having that stuff going. Uh, and preferably I need to keep it above like 50 Fahrenheit or 10 Celsius because that's really where like if peppers get below that temperature, they can stunt like for the season if they get too cold. So we brought those kerosene heaters in here. It would not be feasible to try to heat it all the time because that would just be so expensive to run through kerosene like that and just not a sustainable option. But for the time being, that's what we're gonna do. Um, if we do have like a freezing night coming, this greenhouse just ends up kind of neutralizing to the outside temperature if it's been overcast for a couple days and then it gets really cold. So I'm just kind of battling that. 
we've talked about like we've shorted up jeremiah's done stuff and it's helped some but it will still get down close to freezing in here when it's been overcast for a couple days when it gets really cold at night and that's kind of why i'm thinking once we have that sun porch what i may just do is start all of those things in there in february keep them in there for a few weeks and then when i start needing to pot them up and separate them out and have more space it'll be like march and by that point i'm not having as many freezing nights the freezes aren't as hard and i feel like the it will work out well to kind of use that as the nursery space and then spread out in here once i need more space So today is February 15th. This is historically my seed starting day. Now that I live in South Carolina, I do actually start some seeds like a week or two before that. I'll start peppers and get eggplants in the soil just because they can take a little longer. But this is the day that I have for many years start, begun starting my tomatoes. At this point, I grow so many that I don't always get them started on today. Um, but today I'm gonna sow some tomato seeds, which is a really big deal for me. <laughs> I really don't struggle with it nearly as much now because we're just so darn busy that I actually, I embrace the restful season a little more than I used to know how to. And I don't know if that's busyness or if it's just getting older and realizing how fast time goes by. But uh, for a long time, February 15th was like my lifeline day because it meant to me that the wait was over and that the winter was coming to a close. And I had a really hard time for a long time with like seasonal depression and stuff like that. And as I said, it's really not such an issue for me anymore. I, do, I still get a little bit blue. Today is the day that I get to start seeds. I'm just putting some names and tags the way I start my tomato seeds, and I've, I've done a video in the past kind of going over this in depth. Um, today's more vloggy. What I do with my tomato seeds is I will do like this is going to be one variety. And I'm going to put multiple seeds in this cup. And when the seedlings come up, I just pluck them out carefully, um, maintaining all the roots intact. And then I just replant them separ into separate cups. So I can start my whole garden's worth of seeds in just a couple of trays because each one of these cups is gonna be a different variety. That's kind of what I was mentioning once we have our little sun porch. I could keep it warm being attached to the house a little bit easier. We're building it to be able to keep it warm. And I can start my seeds like this and there. And then once it's time to start separating out and I really need to spread out into more space, it'll be consistently warm enough out here to do that. So this is where I always, go a little crazy because when it's time to to start these seeds it's like eh, just this do i have space to grow 14 plants of berry's crazy cherry i do not <laughs> no no goodness no i don't have that much space did i just drop 14 seeds in this cup yes i did <laughs> will end up when all these seedlings come up do i have the heart to just cut them off no, I don't. So I'll end up putting them in 14 different cups and I'll end up with all these plants. Um, I am going to try to rein myself in and not do that with everything. I do like to start extra seeds because I like to be able to share with people that don't have the space. But I'm starting tomato seeds. 2024 garden. Here it is. Just in a handful of months, we'll be walking among seven foot plants that come from these seeds. All right, let's see if I can rein it in. I'm gonna do five of these. Seven, <laughs> close enough. So when you are planting seeds, if you've been here with me, you've heard me say this probably a thousand times, but just plant them twice as deep as the seed is wide, which means with these little tomato seeds, I'm more or less just dropping them on the surface and then pressing them down, brushing a little soil over the top. I'm not poking any holes, that would be too deep. Um, seeds have enough energy in them when they germinate in the soil to make it to the surface of the soil, at which point they will need to begin photosynthesizing to continue to grow. So if you plant them really deep, they may 
come out of their little seed shell but not have enough energy to break through the surface of the soil. So if you had poor germination, it doesn't necessarily mean your seeds were bad. It may simply be that they were planted too deep. Here's Black Beauty. These are my wild boar farm seeds that I shared with you guys last week. The Jess's collection over at Wild Boar Farms. If you, you, if you know, then you know that that's a really big deal to me to have my Jess's favorite collection <laughs> available from Wild Boar Farms. How cool is that? I figured out that this year I have space for 75 plants, tomato plants, in my long tomato beds. I have space for 15 cherry tomato plants over here. I may go ahead and do one more row of tomatoes over here, kind of like I did last year. And then I may end up putting a few, some plants in the high tunnel, though I probably won't do a lot because I'm not a big fan of greenhouse grown tomatoes. So it looks like I'm probably going to be somewhere in the range of about 115 to 120 plants, which that's a lot of food. But if you want to can um, salsa and spaghetti sauce and diced tomatoes and any like tomato juice or paste or anything like that, like it takes a lot of tomatoes. It takes growing a lot of tomatoes to be able to can all of those things. With 115 plants, considering I grow a lot of heirlooms that are not necessarily the most productive tomatoes, um, I may still be somewhat limited on what all I can can out of those, but I'm okay with that because, I mean, reasonably, I'm trying to be reasonable with myself. Like, we're going to be building our house this summer. We're doing a lot of the work ourselves, and I just, I'm trying to be reasonable with my time this summer. I thought whenever I was looking at how many tomato plants I was going to do, I was like, well, maybe I, we should do another garden. I could do just a bunch of hybrids in the ground and just do for production. And I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? I don't, I just don't think that that's the year for this. I'm going to make the most off of what I grow and preserve everything that I can. But I'm trying, I'm really trying to set realistic goals because we knew in taking on that project that we were, we were choosing for this to be a crunch year. It'll be worth it. I mean, a lot of times in life, we choose, we choose to crunch to get the things done that we want to achieve. But I think that when you are going into something that's going to be a really big project, it's very important to manage your expectations so that you don't end up dealing with a ton of overwhelm. I just planted my Brad's Atomic Grapes. I have to text Malia. I'll wait a minute because it's very early there right now. <laughs> She's definitely not awake right now. But Brad's Atomic Grape is Malia's favorite tomato. We just actually call it Malia's tomato whenever, um, you know, she's here. I'm like, hey, those are Malia's tomatoes. And she will be very excited that I am planting these for her. It's hilarious. Like when Malia gets here, when she's been like, when she gets here for her visit in the summer, when these tomatoes are growing, she will go pick them and carry, like before she walks in the house. If she gets here during the day and she knows these tomatoes are here, she will come through the garden before she ever even goes in, before she even says hi to everybody. Sometimes she'll come in the garden and pick her tomatoes and then walk in the house with a handful of them and be like, hey guys, I'm here. <laughs> Isn't that so cute? Will is coming down the driveway. He's just getting here today. Yesterday, he um, he posted a picture on Instagram of my seed table, and it said, Jay Sowards is out of control. <laughs> I was like, you busted me out, brother, <laughs> because I recognize that this is chaos and that this is crazy, but it's my chaos. It's my crazy. It works for me. <laughs> oh, it's funny. We like giving each other a hard time. Really, the truth is, is like seed starting time is... It is one of my most favorite things. And I, I feel like in the position that I'm in and this incredible opportunity that I have been given to encourage people to garden, one of the big things that I've been able to really like cheerlead a lot of people into is starting their garden from seed, which it comes with challenges. It comes with a learning curve. If you have killed a lot of seedlings and you're like, I don't know, man, it didn't work for me. I've killed a lot of seedlings. Actually, here's a great example. Look at this. A little dried up guys. Dried right up. Killed them this year. These are beets. And I, I just let this, I don't know how it happened. This tray ended up getting really dry. It was just really hot in here one day. Obviously I've been out, everything, out here watering everything. 
everybody else was fine. Those guys just couldn't hang. They were too small and I let that tray get too dry and I killed seedlings. This year, I killed those. <laughs> it's, it's, it happens, man. Like, it, and it happens a lot if you are a particularly forgetful person that lives on lists and makes mistakes and, you know, lets things fall through the crack and falls asleep while the, bre the bread is baking. Like, if you're that kind of person, you're just going to kill seedlings sometimes. So, I, I start extra. Like, that's one of the reasons why I start extra is because we may need extra for, for them to to survive me but even still I love it so much and it has brought me so much joy and like I say looking forward to February 15th being seed starting day like it's it is a extreme point of joy in my life I feel so inspired so fulfilled and so happy by being able to start a garden from seed and it's incredible like you know, five or six months from now, I'll be surrounded by this jungle of plants and hundreds of pounds of food that started here, spread out on my table that could have fit in, you know, a couple of handfuls, just a handful of months before. It's amazing. I'm gonna get back to it. So maybe my chaos is not quite as organized as I'm presenting it because I'm still looking for things. It's fine. It's all under control. I actually uh, was just pulling out all my micro dwarf tomatoes. Last year, I got a lot of micro dwarf tomato seeds and my plan was to do kind of like a micro dwarf project in my green stalks. However, we had the shade cloth on our high tunnel. We were really struggling with keeping the temperature regulated. We have done some things this year to amend that and gotten kind of some emergency measures in place to make sure that we're not gonna deal with that again. My project didn't do what I hoped it would last year because my ceilings all got off to a really rough start. Now, once we had the shade cloth off, I ended up starting a whole new round of seedlings and replacing the plants in the green stalks. And the second wave did really well. They grew, they looked really cool. The problem is, is the tomatoes start dropping their blossoms when it's like 90 Fahrenheit or 32 Celsius. And it is that here, anytime, like mid-June and on, it's that hot here. So you really need to get your tomatoes started early here where it's so hot so they can set a lot of fruit before it gets super hot. Now they'll keep growing the fruit that they set once it's that hot and they'll be okay. They might get a little fussy. The second round got big and beautiful right when it got too hot for them to set a lot of flowers. So I'm gonna try it again this year. I'm not gonna start these in those bigger containers when they're transplant ready, because they're so tiny. Micro dwarf tomatoes only get like between 12 and 18 inches tall. They're very small, they're four containers. When they're transplant ready, they're these little stocky, cute little guys. They're like this tall. Uh, so I'm not gonna put them in those bigger containers. I was looking for one particular tomato that I have that's called Julia Child. It's actually, I bought it to grow because I love Julia Child so much. And I have, I'm not 100% sure where I put the seeds. They're here somewhere. I also found my seed package for one I've got to grow called Grandma Mary. My mother's name is Mary. My kids call her Grandma Mary. So got to grow those. Gosh, it's just so hard. This is why I end up with 87 varieties of tomatoes because when it's seed starting time, I'm so happy. I'm so inspired. And then I see all of them and every single one of them is awesome. And I just, <laughs> I just want to grow them all. <sighs> Self-control in this regard is really just not my strong suit. <laughs> just be real with you. It's not. I'm trying to stick to my plan. Y'all talk me down. Tell me don't start 87 varieties of tomatoes, Jessica Sowers. Don't do it. <laughs> Isn't this just such a happy sight? Will actually message me and needs my input on something. I'm gonna go talk to him and step away from the tomato seeds. All right, guys, I am going to go discuss some future garden plans with Will. We're mixing some things up this year and I've been chewing on it. It's now time to decide. Thank you guys for hanging out with me this morning. Tell me when you're starting your tomatoes. Do you struggle this way like I do? <laughs> Do you have a realistic grasp on what you need to do? Do you have a garden plan that you faithfully stick to? Or are you just a wild one at heart where you just need to control all the things? Thank you guys for hanging out with me today and all the days you do. I bless you. Until next time.